Race 3 in the car was the Terence Hodge and Ray Holden. Welcome back to the track. Brilliantly won by Wolf Stride, DJ Binskin leading from virtually after the start to the winning post in fine fashion with this very classy six-year-old Wolf Stride. Impressive in his display and no doubt impressed both Terence and Ray. I caught up with them to find out about their sponsorship of this particular event. Well, gentlemen, welcome back to the track. I'm going to find out why the long absence, but first of all, Terence, your experience here at Club and Angle. Oh, I like the uh, facilities here. It's uh, certainly a, a different experience to uh, Harold Park, uh, but I enjoyed the era of Harold Park that I was working there. Certainly here, uh, I, I still keep an interest in the in the uh, the trots. I still call it the trots. I've never gone to harness or pacing, I think it's to trots to me. <laughs> and, uh, um, and watching the uh, evolution of times coming down and everything going over the years. Of course, the larger track helps there, but uh, no, I like the facilities here. I think it's a, a very good uh, very good place. Certainly in stark contrast to Harrell Park. Well, yes, well, a uh, much smaller track. I even recall uh, myself running around Harrell Park uh, after a last race and there'd be a group of us who were, being, who were sellers there and uh, uh, whilst we're waiting for everyone to come together, we'd race each other around the track. Uh, much smaller, I wouldn't want to be running around this way, <laughs> much further much further around there. But Harrell Park, uh, the atmosphere, we had crowds back then and uh, so the atmosphere was always very good there. It was, it was nice to be there on a Friday night. Uh, it had lots of regulars that came in. It was a big family. Uh, and I think, as I said, I've followed it over the years, the, the race. I think we were in the golden era. <laughs> I think. Yeah, we certainly were. And Ray, your excuse as far as not being here at Club and Angle for quite some time and at the track, you've got a pretty good reason. Well, yes, I live in London now. I'm, I'm a professor at the Royal Academy of Music. And uh, so, yes, I've been gone since 1978. And we were back in 84. And we went uh, together again in about 1890. And I think the thing about it is it's lovely. It's obviously a fantastic facility here. But the atmosphere at Harold Park was really something special. The, the people would turn up for the big events. They'd be hanging, as I said to one of your colleagues, literally hanging out of the trees. I mean, it was really, really quite remarkable there. And something you can always look back on fondly. Sadly, of course, the, the facility is now completely gone. It's now a housing estate. But the memories are always still there. Well, it was always considered to be like an amphitheatre. Yes, it is. I suppose it is, but actually, it's mainly because of the ge geography of the of the of the area. And I lived up the top of Ross Street there, so I grew up in the in the in the area. And everybody knew everybody, and everybody certainly knew who, everybody who worked there. As Terry said, the atmosphere was very much familial, and that was a very good thing. Big thing about. So, so, so Ray, when did you start selling race books? At what age? Oh God, it must have been when I was 10 or 11, I suppose, maybe a little earlier than that as well. Um, my father was a sportsman, so we used to travel a great deal. So my father bought the business after he left the ring. Um, and of course, in those days, it was much, it was very much a franchise business in those days. And you actually had the, the, the whole district as, as, your, as your part of your business with this. So yes, I grew up with, with this in the background, so to speak. And Terence, a similar story to you as far as selling the trot guide well, and, and also the race book. Yeah, I only sold the trot guide. Uh, Ray's father had the news agency, so Ray sold all the different publications. We sold alongside each other. I sold. I worked for a uh, fellow called Arthur Hunt, who was <laughs> colloquially known by everybody in the racing industry as Jew Boy. He looked like a little Fagan fellow, but he was a he was a very good fellow to us and uh, the boys he employed there. And uh, we were uh, just selling the trot guide. He had the contract, and we went Harold Park, Bankstown, Fairfield. Even used to come here for uh, Jim Carners on a Sunday. Uh, we were selling trot at Penrith on Thursday night. Was another big one. We sold uh, trot guides at, but I only sold with the trots. I only sold trot guide. Just have the white jacket with the with the uh, embossed uh, trot guide on the back. Exactly the same as it's what's on the national trot guide there now. That was on the back of the the shirt there, and uh, I went through a few of those uh, jackets over the years. Um, but I remember I, I turned up on Friday night, set up early. Have a quick read through the uh, the truck guide myself to see what's going on because I was going to be asked questions because I was selling just truck guide, truck guide, and they'd always ask you questions, so I'd have things to tell them about. Oh, what's in there tonight? <laughs> that sort of. Right. So, Terence, now, now, Terence, did you have an interest in harness racing, or was it just solely selling the truck guide? No, I had an interest in the in the harness races. We enjoyed the races there. We kept a, an interest in it. Uh, we read the forms. We watched what was going on. 
we had our favourites and uh, our favourite uh, drivers, our favourite horses, uh, and followed it right through. I started off sh just short uh, when I first started uh, the 60, or just before the 68 Miracle Mile, Hal Wes's Miracle Mile. I was there for that, and then for every one in between up to Young Quinn in uh, 75. I, took, I think it was two days before uh, I was sworn in as a police officer. That's when I couldn't work on the track anymore after that. So uh, uh, that was the period that I was there. And that was a big period. You, know, you, know, you had them all, Hal Wes and uh, Hondo Grattan and, and uh, Pale Face Adios and uh, you know, Welcome at Vols, Vice, Bol Biami, Rocket, Glen Fern, Adapter. You name them all. Uh, yeah, that was, it was just marvellous. And uh, it was a Vic Frost. Uh, Kevin Newman thing. Uh, um, that was a, a Holden versus Ford type of thing for, for people then, uh, what was going on. Uh, and uh, yeah, I used to like it all. That was good. Speaking of Holden, Ray, what was your favourite horse and driver at that particular stage? I suppose actually the old Pale Face Adios thing, which I, uh, was the kind of name that caught the attention as well. And uh, yes, it was. It was, it was the. Um, the kind of battle the whole time, which I think caught the spirit of the place, really. And I was just saying to your, uh, somebody earlier as well, I lived uh, two doors from where Trot Guide was actually made. And of course, uh, there was printed across the road in Ross Street as well. And the uh, managing director was a man called Bruce Levinson. And as a, as a musician, I grew up with, with him very close by as a neighbour. And when he finished at Trot Guide, he used to don his dinner jacket every night with his bow tie and go to one of the four or five star hotels in Sydney and play nightclub music the whole time. So he's a very interesting guy and the chaps who worked in the um, in the office themselves were really fascinating place it was like going actually it was like going somewhere Dickensian it was like stepping back a, a century there the office was terribly tiny the upper rickety set of stairs to the main office and then downstairs there's an even tinier office down there as well but no it was it was a fascinating time the time has changed yeah I've been to that particular venue numerous occasions we're talking about wonderful people like Owen Daly David sure. Curtis Ivan Tilly uh, Marshall Dobson the list goes on and on as far as those wonderful journeys with the trocline of course with change we're now online and this interview now will be on online as far as the trocline is concerned well online's great but I, I actually it's the same with music I, I spent my life with this and you actually find youtube all the time but the problem of course is it actually lacks the character of actually being there personally in many ways and being able to feel it you know i was at a concert the other night at the town hall where the orchestra was actually working from ipads but frankly Turning a page on a score is still a great thing. Touching the trot guide is still a great thing. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, welcome back to the track here at Club and Angle in particular. Hopefully it's not going to be such an extended period next time, but welcome back. And uh, that experience out there on the track watching those races, wonderful experience. Oh, it definitely was. Uh, and it was, it was it was wonderful to share that moment and, and have our name on the race and be able to do a presentation there. That was, uh, and uh, my son arranged that and uh, for us. And, uh, very much appreciated and uh, enjoyed the experience. Yeah. Well, Terence and Ray, wonderful memories. Thanks for sharing them with us. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.